Well, well he, he loved my daughter. He, he adopted her. How did she feel about him? She was um, a little reluctant to call him daddy, but she liked him. Is your husband a jealous man with you? With me? Uh, no, I wouldn't call it jealousy. What would you call it? Possessive. I guess sometimes I feel like I'm a possession of his. You know, he's always adjusting me. My hair and my clothes and, oh, patrolling what I wear. Well, I guess it's kind of loving, I don't know. Oh, I know these patrolling types. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm <laughs> sure. I tell you what. You stay here. We study you. We work together. No fee. Perhaps we uncover something. What? Life after death. Wouldn't that be fun? Especially for those fancy Connecticut doctors. Believe me, you are not going insane. But it is very late. I will lend you some of my wonderful pyjamas. I could barely look at her children after the memorial service. Because I felt so responsible. So you feel guilty for Renee's death as well? I am guilty. You know, I think I let you keep that shirt. It looks so good on you. <laughs> I tell you what I think about your case. You are free to disbelieve me, whatever. You died in the accident. You were really dead for more than five minutes. And I believe that in that time, you rejoined your daughter. There is great love there. And that is where your soul still is, with her, instead of here. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Are you Marie Newberger? Yes. I'm George Westfield. I'm here for my wife. Oh. Let me tell you something. If you've done anything to harm her, you will pay for it the rest of your life. Oh, Mr. Westford, your wife is quite safe. She is here, as you can see. Chris, I want you to come home. I want to take care of you. Remember what I told you. Don't need advice from you, thank you. She's under the care of Dr. Hamilton. Uh, George, I want Dr. Newberger. I'm in complete control of my faculties, and I want Dr. Newberger. No, you're coming home now. Look, I've been very patient and supportive of you all the way, but I'm not going to stand for you getting involved with this woman. She's a charlatan and a quack. I'm calling the police, Mr. Westfield, and I intend to press charges. Do you want to leave me? You're all I love in the whole world, but I'm losing you. If you want me to move out of the house, I will. If you want to stay here in the city, that's fine. But I want you to be where people love you and know you and are going to take care of you. I want you to be home. I want you to be safe. Doing what you're doing here is only going to confuse you more. I've never been clearer. You're killing me. You're killing me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. It's 
all I have. It will be all right. It will be all right, you'll see. Oh, Jenny. Oh, where have you been? No, don't go away, honey. Don't. I just, I didn't think you'd come back. I, I miss you so much. What? Oh, she, she's a doctor. She wants to help me. No, he's not here. He's at home. Honey, why are you crying? Can you tell Mommy why you're crying? You're here. George? George, what? George, what? George, you don't mean that. 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 We have to be very sure about this, Krista. Charge of murder is most serious. You heard it? You saw it? No. Unfortunately, I saw nothing. The authorities will not open an investigation into murder simply because you claim your dead child's spirit spoke to you. Oh, do you have it on tape? I have you on tape. Only you. I have an idea, though. Would you be prepared to take a lie detector test? They are admissible in certain courts. Uh, of, course, of course, anything. Then if what uh, Jenny says is true... So you, you don't believe it? I believe you. But she is... A child, remember? Uh, it is possible that she is trying to hurt her stepfather for taking your love away from her. Or maybe even stir up trouble and punish you for well, marrying a man who is not her real daddy. If we are to go public on this, Krista, it is very important that we keep an open mind on all of it. But I, I believe she's telling me the truth, and I'll prove it. Somehow I'll prove it. Look, we've got to get her some help, Bennett. We've got to get her some help, because this Newberger quack is... It's going to push her over the edge. It's going to destroy her. I highly doubt that, George. I think she's very well thought of. In some circles, anyway. I, I for one, I don't believe her for a minute. Well, I do. Nothing else you've tried has worked. Why not this? Why? Because catch this. Krista thinks that I tried to attack her. This woman's going to convince her that it's true. Then she's going to get her to press charges against me, all because of a stupid hallucination. Okay. If she does any damage to Krista, that's malpractice. That we can act on. But we have to prove she's doing something wrong. Krista's in no condition to pick her own physician. Let's just declare her legally incompetent for her own good. Please just answer yes or no, nothing else. After your accident, you began seeing your deceased daughter? Yes. 
After one of these experiences, did your husband try to kill you? What is your response? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Hello, yes. Dr. Newberger, Phil Cam. Listen, I ran the psychological stress evaluator on her voice tape, and I went back over the both polygraphs point by point. I'll tell you, within the limits of these machines, she is telling the truth. So you finally get an A, Mr. Calm. Thank you. That's two of us now who believe you. Yes, he was in the house, but he had just come in from being outside with my daughter where they've been rowing. Where's clothes wet? Did he have on the same clothes? I didn't see him come in. We were getting ready for a party, and he had uh, just changed into a robe. No witnesses, I presume? No, there weren't any witnesses. Look, she's tired, Mr. Fromm. Five minutes. What's a drowning butterfly? I don't know. I know. I know that she's trying to tell me something. I, I thought that you was the district attorney. I, I mean, I know that there's evidence. If somebody would just look into it. Your polygraph intrigues me. Visions won't arrest a man. But if they lead to evidence, like you say, I'll see what I can do. I'll be in touch in a few days. Thank you. You're welcome. Come, Krista. Yes, he called. Mr. Smart, district attorney. He says the case is a legal zero. Why? No evidence of homicide. The original investigation was very thorough, according to him. He spent 10 days corroborating it. That's what she was trying to show me. How can you know? You haven't seen her in weeks. I know it. I know it has something to do with the butterfly she keeps talking about. Have you figured out what this means? No. No, she wants me to. She wants to reach me. I know how I can make it easier for her. How? Oh. By being in her own bedroom again, where she feels safe. You mean go back to the house? Yes. What about George? George knows that it's real. He knows that it's real, and he's afraid because he knows what I'm going to find out. Crystal, we have to be very careful. If he knows, this means he's very dangerous. You know that I've taken you to every neurologist and psychiatrist that I could find. I've done everything that I could. And they didn't have any experience in this. They thought I was a schizophrenic. Instead, you go to this quack! Who has ridiculous ideas. He likes to prey on people's misery to bleed them for money. <laughs> oh, Mr. Westfield, please. It is not a question of money. I am treating Krista for free, precisely because of the legal ramifications. Possible legal ramifications? What are you talking about? What is she talking about? Look, George. If Dr. Newberger thinks that Crystal would be better off at home... I want her to go home. I've said that all along. Fine, but not with her. 
She makes her worse. She makes her believe in these delusions. I have to be there. You go to work, Mr. Worstfield. Who will protect her if she has another episode? You've got a full-time nurse. Dr. Hamilton has plenty of them, I'm sure. George, I want Dr. Newberger. She is not going to get well under Dr. Hamilton or any of his staff because he makes her believe she is crazy without the slightest possibility that she might be telling the truth. You believed me? Yes, I believed you. I believed you when it was a one-time thing. I mean, I... I knew when you found that necklace that that was a miracle. It appeared to be a miracle. But then it kept happening over and over again, in public. It's not a miracle, Krista. It's something wrong that happened because of that car crash. You know it, and you're not facing up to it. Oh, there's nothing wrong here that Dr. Hamilton can fix, Mr. Westfield. Oh, all the tests in the world will not show what is wrong. The damage is not to Krista's body or her mind. It is to her soul. I want her in her own home under my supervision. Don't you want to help me? Exactly what do you think I've been trying to do all this time? Husband? I am the doctor. We get the hell out of here now. <laughs> something in her hand. She found something in the pot. 
Help me, please. She's clamped down. I don't want to fracture her finger. He won't fracture. Just pull gently. Hey, what's that? Looks like a watch. A man's gold watch. With long hairs caught in it. Looks like a butterfly. What? The hairs on the watch have to match your daughter's hair. Unfortunately, that means uh, exhuming the body. Well, what if she's not there? You don't understand me. She was with me, physically. She pulled me to the bottom of the pond. She put my hand on the watch. She was with me, touching me. January 23rd. Who'll be making the identification, please? I will. You are the mother of the child? Yes. Is this Jennifer Langdon Westfield? Langdon. Jennifer Langdon. I'm removing <coughs> several strands of a girl's hair. Approximately 11 inches in length. <coughs> Placing them in an envelope for later analysis. This belongs to you. The hair sample, which was removed from the watch band, was recently preserved in fresh water and clearly shows evidence of being stretched as if it were yanked out in clumps. Now in session, Judge Wiley presiding. All rise. Order. Order. Everyone knows that George Westfield is one of the most prominent investment brokers on Wall Street. It's inconceivable that a man so well known, so publicized, would, would what, he, he'd lure his seven-year-old stepdaughter into a small boat, knowing full well that she didn't know how to swim, and, and, and murder her while her mother's upstairs dressing for a party. But that's exactly what happened. We're going to prove that little Jenny struggled to survive while he held her under. We're going to prove that she fought so desperately to live against the brute force of a stepfather that she loved and trusted that she ripped his wristwatch from his arm when she went down. We 
you're going to show that Mr. Westfield consistently acts out of this pathological need to dominate everyone. Even another man's seven-year-old daughter is a rival to be bought off when he can or destroyed when he can't. And routine evidence alone is all I need to prove our case. But you're going to hear some of the most remarkable testimony that any jury anywhere has ever been asked to consider. Now, it may conflict with your previous knowledge and beliefs. And that all I ask, all I ask is that you listen to what you're about to hear with an open mind. The alleged evidence that the district attorney is going to ask you to entertain today is essentially a bunch of psychic bumbo-jumbo. Completely unacceptable in a court of law and not worthy of your time and consideration. We will show that Mrs. Westfield is unfortunately mentally unstable. That she is recovering from a near fatal accident and a series of tragic personal losses in recent years that have allowed her to be manipulated by a cunning and very dangerous charlatan. Now the DA will attempt to sway you with Mr. Westfield's public persona. I hope that you can look beyond that. Because if you do, I think you will find throughout these proceedings that George Westfield is just a man. Now, no one can undo the pain caused my client during this fraudulent indictment. You have the opportunity to give him back his, his dignity and his honor. And perhaps most important of all, you have the opportunity to give George Westfield a chance to save his wife. Go on, Mrs. Parker. And that's when I realized it was Jenny. Did you see her fall out of the boat? No. No, she was drifting, uh, face down. And I ran over to your house. Drifting? Wasn't that odd? If Jenny drifted, wouldn't the boat have drifted with her? It didn't occur to me at the time. But the fact is... Jenny was drifting away from the boat. I don't get it. Unless... Unless... someone... drowned Jenny... and then... and then pushed the boat out again? and then pushed the boat back out again, trying to get it near the body. Objection. Sustained. I began to see my daughter. Was this in dreams? No, I was conscious. She was as real as you are. How do you know it's true? Because I saw her. I heard her. And she gave me proof. And then Jenny appeared to you at Dr. Newberger's. Yes. And what information did she give you? Objection. Jennifer is dead. She cannot give us information of any kind. 
A rephrase? When Jenny appeared to you at Dr. Newberger's, what is it you claim she told you? She said that my husband drowned her. Order! I'm warning you. You'll be barred from court if you give us any more disruptions. Is there anything distinctive about the watch you believe Jenny led you to in the pond? Yes, it has a design on the face that resembles a butterfly. And when I found the watch, there were several strands of my daughter's hair tangled in the band that were pulled out in a struggle. Objection. Sustained. Your witness. No questions at this time. What are you doing? Not while she has their sympathy. I floated around on the ceiling. I was perfectly conscious. I watched them, trying to get my heart started again. Which they did, obviously. <laughs> You're the 12th witness? 12th witness today to describe virtually the same out-of-body experience. Do you find this remarkable, Father? Not at all. I find it common. Dr. Halvig, outside of your psychiatric duties, you are also the author of a respected and widely read book on clinical death, are you not? Yes. Do people talk to the dead, Doctor? Well, they believe that they do. Now, clinical death means the cessation of some bodily functions, but the brain is still alive. In other words, no one has ever returned from the dead. Totally impossible. Were you surprised when your wife found your watch in the pond? No, not really. That's where I lost it. How did you lose it? It got tangled in Jenny's hair. Mr. Westfield, how did Jenny's hair get tangled in the watch? Well, I swam out from the shore to save her. And I got to her, and I, I got a hold of her, but she kept going under. And I got so desperate at one point that I, I grabbed her hair, and some of it got caught right here in a watch band, just like this one. So I pulled it off as quick as I could so that I could get a better grip on her. Hank, he's lying. He's lying! He's lying! Be seated. He's lying! Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Be seated. Sit down. Be seated. Call Krista Westfield to the stand. Now, you claim that Jennifer told you about the drowning watch, the drowning butterfly after Renee's memorial service. She appeared to you on the stairs, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. She then led me to it in the pond. I see. Were there any witnesses to this event at Renee's? Yes. Who saw Jennifer? Uh huh. And then you claim that your daughter again returned from her so called resting place to inform you that her stepfather killed her. Were there any witnesses to that? Yes, Dr. Newberger was there and she recorded it. Oh, really? May we now please hear Jenny's voice on tape? No. I beg your pardon? No. No. With all due respect, Mrs. Westfield, to your present stress and past history, are you now saying 
that the only testimony on your behalf is that of your dead seven-year-old daughter? Objection! And that you expect this jury to convict your husband because you hear voices? Objection! That's badgering the witness! Overruled. It is not a matter of does out-of-body experience happen, but rather under what conditions. Yeah, but, but other psychiatrists who've examined Mrs. Westfield, actually, actually the majority of the medical profession, they dispute your theories, even ridicule you. Are they incompetent? No, just frightened or inexperienced. They laugh, so what? The frightened and ignorant always laugh. They laugh at the right brothers. Everybody flies anyway. <laughs> then, just because someone believes that they've talked to the dead, that doesn't mean that they're insane. Quite the contrary. Most people in the world believe they talk to the dead. The statistics show that 72% of widows and widowers believe they communicate with their deceased spouse. Your witness, Dr. Nurberger. Does the name Samuel Barton mean anything to you? It was my patient. And where is he today? He's dead. Died under your treatment, didn't he? It was uh, very early in my career. Mm -hmm. Committed suicide at 20, did he not? He was a very sick young man. He had tried to commit suicide very many times. Ah, you have to but understand. committed suicide after you treated him with an untested drug. Isn't that right? In <sighs> London? Recipine. They did not know. It was an experimental medication. An untried the... drug. on which he became acutely depressed and threw himself out of a 10th floor window. Is that correct? That's what Objection. happened with the SRP. Objection! Overruled. The boy's parents sued for malpractice. You settled out of court admitting medical errors. Is that not correct? I did my best. Any psychiatrist in my Oh, any psychiatrist? The... Did not the British General Medical Council censor you because of your actions in that it's case? Censored everybody. Yes or thinking. no? It was a very yes conservative yes organization. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. As a result, your husband divorced you, and you took back your maiden name of Nierberger in order to enter Harvard with a clean slate, so to speak. He deserted me. Of course I took back Trying my name. Trying to obliterate your past, hoping it wouldn't follow you, you changed every document. Every record legally. But why so thorough? Unless you were ashamed. I have nothing to... That's all. I have nothing whatsoever That's to all. be ashamed of. You may step down. That happens. Medicine. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise and face the jury? How do you find? Your Honor, we, the jury, find the defendant, George Westfield, not guilty.
There's nothing else I can do, baby. I tried. I tried everything I could. I know that you were telling me the truth. I'm just, I'm just so sorry I married him. When we first examined the evidence, I was convinced Mr. Westfield was guilty. But our system has proved we were wrong. An innocent man's been maligned by a sick wife and a so-called psychiatrist. My first duty is to justice. Reporting an acquitted verdict in the yeah, here's spin control from and to justice. I'm Sandy Heatherton, Channel 22 News. I have a little house in Innsbruck. No. I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to change my name. No. Good, I'm glad. Jenny wouldn't like it. Jenny's gone now. She's not coming back. No, Jenny is with me. Always with me. And I am not going to listen to anything. Just because it's logical, or sensible, or nice. I earn the right to be mad. Is that you? Ha, 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 ha. 
Please don't know I get in. Ha, 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 ha.